if you could talk to those two quarterbacks today, what would you want to tell them? What, what should they know from your experiences? What should they know? <laughs> My turn. No, right now. You want to get the only thing I the only thing that's different, the biggest difference between the seventies, I will say eighty one and today. In eighty one we had reporters, we had newspapers. That's about it. And so when it came to a player's confidence and it came to our team, the fact that I couldn't throw the ball very well was hidden. It both sides. So when we played games, the teams didn't just bring all the defense up. I mean, you know, if they had, I'd been in a world of trouble. <laughs> But today, you know, I'm, with business, social media, Twitter, we've got 24-hour news radio, we've got 24-hour ESPN radio, commentators have to have things to talk about. And for a player who's playing today who may be struggling with a particular type of performance, that's going to he's going to have to be really, really mentally tough. And so when I, when I watch our team today, and I was watching the news the other night, is it uh, is it Smith? Who's the uh, ESPN guy? Is it Steve Smith? No, Steve A. Smith. Steve A. Smith. It, you know, it was it was brutal, and those are the kind of things I wish that wouldn't occur. For the sake of, you know, I can think back to myself, and anybody that puts on the red jersey that starts for Alabama is a good football player, and we've got two fantastic quarterbacks at the University of Alabama right now, outstanding. And both of, them, both of them have their specific skill set, which is exactly what Stephen said. Stephen threw the ball excellent. But there's not many quarterbacks can through Alabama that threw like Jeff Rutledge. Rutledge is unbelievable. And we've got a young kid that's there today that just throws the ball unbelievable. But we've got another one that throws the ball very well. And so part of it is camaraderie, and, and, and Walter can address it. But, you know, my senior year, and I'll really get through, but especially my senior year, you know, I was a leader, I was a fifth year guy, Walter was just a sophomore. But part of our chemistry was, if we were behind and we needed to throw, I didn't want to be in the game. I wanted to win. And the best chance we had to win was putting this guy in the game. So I knew the first guy to tell Coach Rowe, we got behind, hey, let's get Walter in the game, we want to win the game. And so if, if, if quarterbacks will look at the game and approach it that way and support each other, you still compete, but you put the team first, and that's what Stephen was talking about earlier. I think in 81 when we won the SEC, three quarterbacks played that year, and all three quarterbacks had a lot of playing time. I was towards the latter part of the season. But we accomplished the goal. We didn't win the national championship, but we, but we won the SEC, which for our team was a, a great accomplishment. And I think that we won it, I think we won it four out of my five years that we're there. Just commenting and echo on Alan, um, you know, it's it's great to see Andrew and Tyler go at it. I mean, it's, it's that's a, but that's a camaraderie that we talked about. But um, for for what's what you asked the question about what's going on down there right now, I really feel it's important that uh, each of those guys focus on what they can do and with what they can control, and you know and and and. and what you can control is what you focus on. When you start focusing in on that, your comp competitor, that's when you lose sight of the whole goal of what needs to happen for, for you as a, as a player, as well as for the benefit of the team. Um, it, you know, focus on what you can control. You, you know, you know um, uh, Tua has, he has a really, really unique skill set. I've never seen anything like it, you know, and, and it's, it's a big time benefit for the team. I mean, if, if you look at the, the, the national championship game, you can see the, the impact that him coming to the game had on the team. That happened with, with um, Jeff and Stedman. That happened with Gary and Richard at times when they were substituted in, where you could see the team chemistry change because you had a different skill set in there. And it, that, that's, it, and Coach Bryant did it all the time. I mean, some, you know, the, the fans used to express it in terms of booing one quarterback and not booing another. The second thing I always had 
had it good, you know, there. I mean, they, they go raw step and then they boo gel, you know, I mean, all the time. But, but, but you know, it, it, it's a tool that can be used on a team if it's used wisely in terms of playing both quarterbacks. I love to see them play both uh, quarterbacks because it's going to put some serious pressure on who's at, who has to defend and prepare for defending. And, and that's, that's key here. Um, but, but control what you can control. When you focus on your competitor, you're going to lose sight of the, 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 the big picture. And that's not what it's about there. So that, that would be my suggestion to the competition that's going on down there right now. Anybody else want to weigh in on that question? I, I will real quick. Um, it's all about the diamond ring. <laughs> and I know that sounds kind of, I don't know, unbelievable, but I mean, we're out of Sorry. No. <laughs> uh, but the, you're there to win a national championship, and whoever it takes to win it is what you want to be about. And, you know, there are going to be times when Jalen's going to, on the goal line, going to be the best person in there. But then there are going to be a lot of other times when, you know, the defense is shutting the run down that, that two is going to be the best person to be there. And the mentality of both of them has got to be, we're here for the team. Just like Tyler and, and uh, Andrew, they were all about the team. I mean, Tyler was, I mean, they great quarterbacks recruited, but I mean every year, you know, Allen was a parade all America. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> I may not be here long, but then I had a parade all America news ahead of me. I mean the competition, but as long as you have your focus on we're here to win national titles. And that's what you focus on. And that's what Coach Ryan and I'm sure Coach Saban is saying, look, you can't think about yourself. You can't think about your NFL career. You think about your time here in Alabama. I mean, we're the ones that you're about. And, and that should, hopefully, solve the problem. Now, is it fun when your competitor has a great game and you don't do too well? You know, no, it isn't. And all of a sudden, the next week, they're talking about, oh, it's, you know, we're going to have another start. Those, that's just part of growing up. That's business. That's been life. You know, you're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. What are you going to do about it? And we all have struggles. And we all have challenges. But we all have a Lord that can be our strength, be our shield, and be our fortress to get us through because it's all about the whole and never the one. I will say one other thing. My, you know, this doesn't this have to do it does have to do with football, but it has to do with your child and when your child's being recruited and what school they go to. One of the things back in the 70s and the 80s, you couldn't transfer. And so today you have transfer. And so my daughter, she played golf in Alabama, she's won state AMs and, and and we went when she was getting recruited, I remember the coach, and I remember one of the things we found and we learned was is that when you go and you play at a university, you go to the school where you want to get your degree. Because after you graduate, that, that's where you're alumnus. And so if you want to be an alumni of the University of Alabama, you stay. And so, you know, I kept watching a lot of the girls on the golf transfer. You know, they didn't, they weren't happy where they were, they might not be playing, and they transferred to another school and they go to two, three schools. And with football and these transfer rules, they do that today. So we didn't have that back then. And I know that when I look at it, I look at it from a longevity standpoint. Everybody here is a big Alabama fan. Many of you are in the A club, but our commitment is to that school. And everybody that's up here, the fraternity we're in, we're in the Alabama fraternity. And whether I played 100% of the time or 20% of the time, my, my commitment was to the university. My commitment was to my coach. My commitment were my teammates. And today, 40 years later, my commitment is still to those teammates. And so transfer rules provide opportunities for these kids to go from one place to another. And, and I just, I just I, the, the wisest coach told me about my daughter. He said, I always said, no matter where she, who, who recruits her, 
make sure she goes where she wants to go so she's happy and she gets the degree from the university that she wanted to. So she walked on like David Smith in Alabama and ended up getting a scholarship and ended up playing a good bit. But she's got a degree from the school that she wanted to go to. And I just, I just hope that these football players see that and understand it so that rather than looking at it from the short term, you look at it from the long term. Down to, toward the end of our time, and uh, I want to ask a question that's a little more lighthearted. Uh, when when you were playing, and there was a practical joke pulled, who was the person that you thought of first? Uh, when I asked that of Marvin Constant, he said me. <laughs> uh, so who, who was the one that was the big jokester? And they're trying to sign this one's with right now. Right? So uh, anybody, you know, who's the one that y'all thought of the one that was pulling the practical jokes? Of the quarterback? Just on the team in general. Oh, okay. I don't know about pulling them, but it seemed like every time somebody was getting thrown in the ice bath, it was always Blake Sims for us. <laughs> <laughs> and I think everybody was pranking his ass. <laughs> yeah, uh, for us, uh, you guys probably remember this name. It's probably Roger Schultz. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Anytime anything happened, you just about look at him. He may not have done it personally, but he was involved somehow. <laughs> uh, when I played, uh, Buddy Brown was an All-American, and uh, he didn't like the frat rats behind our dorm. <laughs> He'd go over and pick, pick fights with them. <laughs> and uh, he was a tough guy. So Three uh, He took them all on. He was like, so it was Buddy Brown when I was. Yes, all right, we got a question from uh, from Andy. Uh, and again, this is from Andy. What's your? Uh, he said, "What's your best play? Your worst play? And your most memorable play?" Anybody want to take that? Best play, worst play, most memorable play. Hmm. Okay. Go ahead. All right. My my best. If I it would have been really a good play if I was faster. My best play was. Uh, a long run in the Auburn game. Uh, my worst play was when I got under the guard instead of the center. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I didn't realize that the center turned his head back and the linebacker started yelling, trick play, trick play. <laughs> it took me a moment, but I figured it out. I didn't yell shift, but I did not yell shift. Anyway. down against Ole Miss in that game at Legion Field that was nationally televised. Archie Manning was lighting the place up. We get down, we're down 32 to 27. There's maybe two, three minutes to go in the game. I realize this is our last shot. That run every play we've had. We've thrown the ball out 30. Five or so times, I guess, and ran it. Johnny had a good night, moose so to run the ball. So anyway, a tough situation down six points, three minutes to go or so in the game, and actually I called timeout, went over to the sideline and asked Coach Bryant what he wanted to do. Well, of course, he turned to Jimmy Sharp, the assistant coach, and started, Jimmy, Jimmy, what are you doing? Chesterfield in his mouth. And, yeah, what are you doing? And of course, Coach Sharp starts calling Coach Steve Sloan up in the press box. <laughs> What do you want to do? Jimmy, what do you want to do? And they're going back and forth, and there's no word from Coach Sloan coming down. I'm standing there, and finally the official came over and said, Time's up, Alabama captain. You got to play. Well, I turned to go to the field. I had no play, and I heard Coach Bryant yell, Scott! Scott! And I kind of I couldn't stop running, but I got it. I just turned my shoulder around and looked. He says, Run the best thing you got! <laughs> <laughs> okay, red right, 56 come back in, max protection. George Randall was right there, made a good catch in the end zone. We win 33 <laughs> 32. The only thing I have, um, well, there's two of them, they're not really plays, but um, the very, our first game. Uh, in the 1988 season. Homer Smith was the new offensive coordinator at Alabama. Some of you guys may remember him. And he told me 
about Wednesday before the game, he says, David, I want to eat a hot dog and drink a Coke in the press box. He said, I want you to call the game. <laughs> so the next couple of days we did that, and I, I called the game from a line of scrimmage. I called every play from a line of scrimmage. It was the precursor to the hurry up, no huddle, right? So uh, but we didn't go that fast. We didn't go near that fast, but that was, uh, that was one memorable thing. The other thing that's probably the worst thing that ever happened uh, that we want to forget about is we were playing Penn State uh, at Legion Field on that hard turf out there, and I got hit, went down, and my head hit against the turf and got up. And this is before concussions and all the other things you had to deal with that uh, they were worried about. And I started walking to Penn State's huddle. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was on the other side of the ball, and Howard Cross grabbed me and pulled me back to the other side. And I do not remember a single play after that in that game. <laughs> We watched, we watched the film the next day. I didn't remember a single thing about it. Well, how'd you do that? I don't remember. <laughs> we won. We won. The good thing is we ended up winning. I don't think I, I did real well, but I had no idea what we did that the rest of the game. I got one. I got two actually. Well, one. Um, my worst play uh, was in Coach Brown's last game. I, 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 the tension was high. And uh, we, we, we get the ball back uh, with like two minutes and something left and we needed to run out the clock. So we're running a wishbone, and <clears throat> I get in there, and um, uh, we get third and nine with, um, you know, I don't know, men and something else. I ought to go to quick out. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? I ought to go to quick out, which is just a you know, nine yard pass. I throw an incomplete pass. <laughs> And man, when, when I did that, you know, uh, Alan went on the team. My consultant, Alan used to be my guy to come to after a series when he was a senior, I was a sophomore. This was my, this was my junior year. Mike McQueen, who is a doctor now in Enterprise, he was my guy. And when I threw that interception, I mean, when I threw that incomplete pass, I come to the sideline, I'm looking for McQueen. It's like the whole sideline had turned their backs on <laughs> And then, and then uh, Coach Bryant, I, I, I don't curse, but he, he had a few words, choice words. And he, he said, what in the H-E-L-L are you trying to do for them? Are you trying to win the game for them? <laughs> and so I get, you know, Anthony Smiley, all of them had turned their back. I was like on the sideline all by myself, you know, hoping that we would get the ball back. And I'm praying, and Jeremiah, come on, to intercept the ball, or whatever, you know. And sure enough, with like 19 seconds left, uh, Jeremiah intercepts the pass off of Tony Eason. And he's running down the sideline. We got 19 seconds left. I'm standing next to Coach Brian. I'm like, Coach Brian, you want me to go in there and kill the clock? <laughs> he said, H E L L O, Paul, get in there and kill the clock. Kill the clock. <laughs> I was like, Lord of mercy. <laughs> but uh, that's one of the worst plays I've ever had, you know, in my career. And then I think the best play that we did not, um, uh, this game here, the Penn State game, 1983, where we were down 34 to 7 at the half, no, at going into the fourth quarter. And we start coming back on them, and uh, we get it, to, we get the score to 28 to 34, and uh, it's third and about a, uh, a yard or two weird near the end zone. I drop back the pass, and it's like three guys blitzing from my left. I'm like, there's no sign of just here. And I'm like whirling and twirling to throw that ball, and I deliver the ball to Preston, um, uh, Preston Gothard in the end zone. He catches it. There's no instant replay, but it, the bottom of half of his body falls in. Uh, and we, we should have won the game there. Um, but uh, that, that's one of the greatest plays that I've ever had. And it's funny, that, that, that quarter, I think I was 15 or 16 for like 200 some yards. You know, it was just ridiculous. You know, they're uh, 357 yards, 100 yards, some little 357 yards during that game. But that was one of the greatest games that I've ever played personally. And, and I remember, um, throwing a pass down the middle to uh, Thorn Chandler. It's like a 30-yard game. And I got hit, I was sitting on the ground. And you know how you get the angel on one shoulder and the devil will be on the other shoulder? The devil was over here saying, man, if you pull this off, this would be the greatest comeback in college football history, you know. And, 
And it, you got so close to making that happen, and it wasn't by our doing, it was by somebody else's doing in terms of making a bad call. But that was one of the greatest opportunities and times that I had on the field, I would think. Well, we're about out of time. Does anybody have any closing comments they want to make? Any last thing they want to say? Any bubbles still to go? Scott? Well, I'm the senior up here, so I guess I'll close it. I think uh, you notice that there are different players from different eras with different coaches, but all of them Alabama quarterbacks. And there's something Coach Bryant used to say that always sticks with me. He would say, about players when he would look at them, he would say, I don't know what the definition of class is, but I know it when I see it. And that's what I see up here tonight.